Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for EliTheComputerGuy.com and this is episode 320, another Windows 8 review, Atom vs. the i3 or i5 processor for your Windows 8 tablet. So you've decided to go out, you're going to buy a Windows 8 tablet, and now you're looking at all these processors. You've got the Windows RT on an ARM processor, you have these, these x86 uh, Black, uh, tablets that are on the Atom processor, but then there's another one, an i3 processor and an i5 processor. So you're thinking, oh my golly, what one do I pick? And especially as I talk about, I'm trying to, to, to talk to you guys, give you buying advice for when you buy for clients. And if this confuses a lot of geeks, think about how average secretaries feel or average office workers feel when they go out to buy a new Windows 8 tablet and they have all of these options in front of them and they have no idea what the hell is an ARM, what the hell is an x86, what's an i3, an i5, an Atom, what does any of this mean? So as I've talked about a lot, again, I'll just keep hammering home, it is my personal opinion, but I truly believe in it. Don't buy the Windows RT, don't buy the Windows 8 tablets with the ARM processor. I think that is going to cause nothing but nightmares. The reason being is any of the Windows 8 tablets with ARM processors will not be able to run the same software as the Windows uh, 8 tablets with Intel-based processors. So stay away from the ARM. I would say just stay away from your ARM, especially if you're dealing with a client, especially if you're dealing with bosses, you have to buy stuff for people ARM, ARM is only going to come to bite you in the butt at the end of the day. So then you are left with uh, what processors to choose from, from the Intel family. So you will see Atom uh, tablets and you will see the i3 or the i5 tablets. So basically all these are, are these are different families of the Intel processor. So the i3 and the i5 processors are the continuation of Intel's line of, of high-end processors. So going back to Pentium 1, Pentium 2, uh, Pentium 4, then going off and doing whatever they've been doing the last few years, then they came out with i3, i5, i7. This, uh, these are their standard processors. So these processors are generally relatively powerful uh, so that they can run more complicated software and applications more smoothly. The Atom processors are, on the other hand, are Intel's attempt to catch up with ARM, A-R-M. So ARM processors have been used for the past decade in smartphones and tablets. So ARM processors are uh, use very little power, uh, energy, electricity, so they are not as powerful as normal Intel uh, processors, but they use less power, less energy, they draw less from the battery, and so that they've been good within the smartphone and the tablet sphere. So this is something, uh, this is a sphere that Intel did not want uh, a few years ago. Basically, Intel looked at what ARM was creating processors for, the, 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 uh, the devices that ARM processors, processors were going into, and Intel said, why the hell do we care about that? That's dumb. Well, then, with the explosion of iPhones, with the explosion of Android devices, with the explosion of, of tablet uh, PC, tablet computers, Intel realized, oh, we've got to get into that game or we are going to go out of business. We are going to lose a lot of money. So that's where they came up with the Atom processors. So Atom processors are based off the same x86 architecture as uh, i3 processors, as i5 processors, as i7 processors, which means it's Atom processors can run the standard versions of Linux, standard versions of Unix, standard versions of Windows, so on and so forth but they are not as powerful for actually being able to do computations because they are more energy efficient. So these are much more energy efficient Intel processors that are, that are meant to go into things like tablets. So when you're thinking about what uh, processor to buy, uh, you know, what tablet to buy and what processor to buy, this is something that you have to think about. The Atom processors, the battery life is generally going to be much longer than the i3 or the i5 processors, but it won't be as powerful. The i3 and i5 will be able to run more software, run it more smoothly, but they will go through battery 
much more quickly. Now, when you are going to deal with your clients, the question is, is what are they going to be doing with that tablet computer? If all they're going to be doing is checking the email, writing some papers, doing some data entry, then an Atom processor should be fine for them and they will be happier with an Atom processor. If they're gonna be like me, I'm going to be going into the field with my little, uh, my, my Samsung uh, Windows 8 tablet when it finally comes out, the one I want, I'm going to be going out, I'm going to be shooting a high definition video footage, I'm going to be editing it while I'm in the field and uploading it while I'm in the field. And so in order to do things like editing video very well, I need a more powerful processor. So this is what you should be looking at. Now when we go over and we go to a, a website such as Newegg, we can see that they have many, 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 many different options uh, for all the, uh, the Windows 8 tablets that are coming out. Now the big thing that people are going to be looking at is price. So you'll notice that the Atom uh, Windows 8 tablets are less expensive, far less expensive than the i3 or the i5 based tablets. So basically the Atom uh, tablets start at $599, $649, $749. And basically the Atom uh, versions of the Windows 8 tablets are the ones that are going to be under $800. The i3 and the i5s start at the eight or $900 mark and go up from there. So basically, as I keep talking about when you are dealing with your clients, when you are buying devices for other people, you have to look at what those people need done. If this is a secretary, if this is a basic person that just needs to do data input, needs a long battery life, they're not going to be doing high powered applications on their little tablet, then the Atom processors are probably their best bet, and so it's good. So the battery will last longer, and it's the least expensive option. It's good all the way around. On the other hand, if you're dealing with things like CEOs, executives, if you're dealing with people like me who are going to be doing more high-powered um, applications while they're out on the road, then they should be looking at the i3 or the i5. Again, I'm looking at the i5 processor version. Again, it's going to cost me like thirty. Twelve or thirteen hundred dollars, but the value for that, the money that I can make by spending that thirteen hundred dollars and getting a very good tablet that does everything I need, more than makes up for the price difference between that and the five hundred and ninety nine dollar version. So that's the difference between the Atoms and the i three or the i five processors. Atom processors are less expensive, better on battery life, uh, but poorer on actual processing power, the i3s and the i5s, much better on processing power, much more expensive, and much worse on battery life. Again, whatever your, your client needs, that's what you should buy for. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This was episode 320, Windows 8 review, Atom vs. i3 or i5 processor. Really? It really does. What does the end user need it to do? That's what you have to ask. If you figure that out, you're fine. So uh, I enjoyed taping this episode and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.